All right, so we got how Mortal Kombat 2 cheats against you. Let's grab activity so when it comes See, to I knew I games, wasn't trash, no you know? I knew I was yeah, all right. The, money. the more quarters that you pump in, the more profit margin the manufacturer receives. True. And the arcade games would really pull you in by making you feel like that you were really good at the game in the first couple of stages and then flipping the script to really ramp up the difficulty. And in some Jeez. cases, the game would outright cheat. In 1993, Midway would release a sequel to one of the most popular Shout to Midway, games bro. of all time. Mortal Kombat 2, or MK2 as we will call it, was everything that the original arcade release had turned up to Look 11. Look at this cheese, bro. ...to become one of the most successful arcade games ever released. Its success would guarantee home console versions would release the following year on the Game Boy, Game Gear, Super NES, and Sega Genesis, releasing simultaneously on Mortal Tuesday, nothing, September nothing can you pay you. 13th, 1994. <laughs> At the time, it was the best opening week of somebody, sales somebody in said, video game history. Somebody said... Sold. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 2 was a somebody said that the owner of Mortal Kombat, he must... <laughs> he must be a blood because he don't give us the secret. Or is it... Or is it he must be a crip? Because he don't use the secret. Which were a significant improvement over the original. With that addictive Mortal Kombat gameplay, and of course, the blood girl uh. fatalities would also be a part of the game. But new updates were introduced. New fatalities, new stages, new characters. Bro, Mortal Kombat came a Mortal long Mortal way, bro. Mortal Kombat and MK <coughs> delivered, completely dominating both arcade and home sales. But we're not here to talk about the different versions oh my of God. MK2. Instead, in this episode... There's one part of the game that I'm not a fan of that's absolutely infuriating, and that is the cheating AI. And this is probably a good part of why the game grossed so much money in the arcades. MK2 would straight up cheat and perform moves instantly that any human players simply could not do given their reaction times <laughs> and the three Oh, she just put us on our neck. So let's take a closer look to show you what I'm talking about. If I launch the arcade version in MAME, and if I try an uppercut, you can see that the opponent, in this instance Raiden, counters my move, and then performs a throw at exactly the same time. If we slow down the frames, you can see that I've clearly connected with him before he throws me. Yet, my move has been completely nullified, but his throw is the one that Oh my is. god, straight cheese, and I would do the same thing! I tried a forward jump kick against Baraka, he immediately, without hesitation, skewers me every single time. Jeez. And of course, there is no way... Jeez. He, <laughs> he simply knows what I'm trying to do seemingly, even before I've pulled off the move. In MK2, after the first few rounds, jumping towards a CPU opponent is a death sentence that you should completely avoid. And this is true for all characters in the game. But what about sweeps? Check this one out against Katana. This looks to be perfectly executed, right? Nope, she just picks up the character and throws me. The game makes you believe that you're not a very good player. In reality, <laughs> she really, bro, she really like hitting us with the Brock Lesnar, bro. So what exactly it's not even funny, bro. Here? The original Mortal Kombat release would give you a few rounds to get warmed up, and it didn't feel this cheap. In MK2, however, the first round of the game seems like it's a bit of a warm-up round where you can essentially defeat an opponent pretty easily and most of your kicks and punches will connect without too much issue. But after yeah. that, the cheating AI will try to take victory from you every single round. If you didn't know any better, oh my it God. like the AI knows your player movements as you're doing them and reacts during the same frame. As it turns out, this is exactly what happens. Oh my God. This is what's known as input reading. When fighting against a human opponent, the game's code will read your inputs and react to them instantly. Now, to be fair, MK2 isn't the only game that has input reading. Many of them do. But it's what the AI does in response that makes the game... Just straight cheating, bro. Taking my quarters, bro. It is what it is. It's fine. I get over it. AI does everything to cheat against you. So, as always, I wanted to learn more about the game and its AI from a technical perspective on how it works. Okay. Unfortunately, the source code for MK2 is not available to look at. But I did stumble across the ultimate MK3 source code for the Sony PlayStation on GitHub, which appears to be based on the original UMK3 arcade source. Now, disclaimer, it's not MK2, but UMK3 is also incredibly cheap, and it's highly likely that it's taken some of that code 
from MK2 and applied of course it is the same well it's not the same game but like it's from the same play a few rounds of you MK3 on MAME and yes after round one the same issues oh my god cuts and jump kicks UMK3 also oh my god punch that man through the ceiling can also unleash hey oh my god look at Jade that a human simply cannot do oh my god she throw, oh my god yo hey that's so cheating bro oh my court is back big source of frustration for many a mk2 player from the beginner novice all the way up to the experienced player but let's try to understand how the game cheats and what exactly is going on now before we dive into the code it's important to know some terms that are used in the game when it comes to midway games, the term drone is used to describe a computer opponent. Okay. MKDrone.c file handles all the AI for a drone and each of their corresponding characters in the game. The okay. AI itself is pretty basic. Internally, the code will use a variable known as diff, and this stores the current difficulty of the game. This value then is used in a random number chance that the computer AI will react to your move. Note okay. that this variable diff is internal and it's not the same as the actual difficulty level of the game in the machine's dip switch settings. Now this is specific UMK3 code, but for the first three matches, the diff variable will increase by one. And if you make it to the fourth round in the ladder, then diff will increase by an additional two. Uh -oh. If you make it to the fifth round and beyond, diff will increase by an additional three. The highest uh -oh. value diff can be is nine. The variable diff controls how the AI reacts in the game. It also will help the player in certain scenarios. For example, oh, really? if the player loses three matches in a row, then the diff variable is decreased by one, making the next game, should the player decide to pump in more quarters into the arcade cabinet, a little easier. The term in the code that is used when a drone... They are here cheating, bro. Finessing us. And there are many scenarios where a drone will react to any move that the player is performing. The percentages of those reactions are based on a sliding scale. This Bro. variable here, RT underscore drone underscore reverse, is a list of values from zero to 900. If the difficulty is six then, then this value returned is 700. This bro, they, is listen, these arcade games really took our lunch money, bro. And this is For real. <laughs> taking the value I'm not even laughing, bro. They really took our lunch money. Which means that there is a seventy percent chance that in the second <laughs> match, they had us ladder, pumping. That a drone will react to your move. If you manage to get to the fourth match on the ladder, the difficulty is hey. at a ninety. Yo, they had us pumping quarters in. <laughs> the AI really starts to cheat, and note that these drone reactions just, are just straight cheating. The same frame. This also helps explain on very very few occasions where an uppercut or a forward jump kick will actually land. The CPU AI also checks to see. If you are spamming repeat moves and attempts to counter them. Note here in UMK3, as soon as I come in with a forward jump kick, the CPU immediately backs it goes away, back. so the kick won't connect, and this repeats every single time. The diff variable is what drives the entire AI for the computer. Another okay. function here, toss drone check, checks if the player can perform a throw. Is, is the, the diff thing like that for like every arcade game? Is where the drone has a chance to react. Once again, based on that diff variable, if that variable is set high, let him then slam me. React more often. Another thing to note is that the default difficulty on MK2 in the arcade is medium. You can okay, adjust yeah. dip switch settings difficulty to be as low as very easy. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to very easy. Only delaying the inevitable. Essentially, the diff value will start. I'm trying to get like some tickets, bro. Like nine by the time that you progress to the bosses. But even before the bosses, as you're fighting up the ladder, a diff value of six and above will start to become very cheap in the game. In order for the player to beat the CPU, it doesn't really take advantage of your skill. In general, if you spam jump back, the CPU will jump towards you to stay the distance and then simply perform a high kick. Given all oh, this, wow. I still love MK2 and I still rate it as I don't. I series. want listen, so I want every single one of my quarters back. I like I was now good enough at the game or maybe that my reaction times were too slow. And while in some instances that was they, they had me at the thing. <laughs> they had me at the arcade like a, like a, like a crackhead, bro. <laughs> hey, I was putting in quarters all day. <laughs> As I feel like the gameplay and AI deserved something more advanced. But in conclusion, I will always have amazing memories of MK2. It was truly something special 
when it released back in 1993, and it's still one of my favorite arcade games of all time. So that will do it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I really all right, man. Uh, shout out to what's was it, was it MVG? Listen, I never really I played a, I played like Mortal Kombat games at art like at like an arcade before. I don't know if it was specifically Mortal Kombat two, but I do remember playing Mortal Kombat games um, at an arcade, bro. And I remember me literally, and I promise you, you guys like when like whenever like you walk into like an arcade and you see like the little um. It's like like a little machine that like you put your dollars in, so like the dollars can turn into like quarters, so you can put the quarters into like you know all the different type of games, bro. I'm thinking like, oh, what oh what that say here? Uh, 100 tickets, 50 tickets, just just to beat this? Oh yeah, easy. Sign me up. I, I put, <laughs> hey, I put the dollars in, right? I get the quarters. You know, I'm hey, I'm about to, <laughs> I'm about to beat this first try, right? Boom, boom, 50 cents, two quarters, gone, right? So, <laughs> now again, I don't know if it was Mortal Kombat 2, but let me just say, the first, listen, I'll probably say like, the first like two fights, destroyed, easily, one. Bro, the next fights, boy, they was tracking my every move. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, oh man, I got it. Let me, boom, boom, two more quarters. <laughs> Down the train. Bro, hey, I'll listen. I pro oh, my, I, was, I didn't mean to hit you guys' ear, but I promise you, bro, I was pumping in quarters so much, bro. Like, it even got to a point to where, like, bro, I was, listen, I, I ran out of quarters, right? I was just open my wallet and be like, you know what, man, I got this. Because me, listen, I listen, you might find this hard to believe, but for me, it's very hard for me to give up, right? Just in general, just stuff in general. It's very hard for me to give up, which is a good thing. For me, and a bad thing for me, right? Because n now I know, you know, like whenever it comes to stuff, like whenever it comes to like, let's just say stuff that requires me to like spend my money, whatever. If I'm spending a lot of money at something, right? And I'm not winning at it. Maybe it's a good idea for me to lay off, right? I know that now. But like, bro, growing up, bro, when we used to go to arcade and like, obviously, you know, this money is, is for like food and stuff like that for, or, or for like other things. But, like, you know, you're losing in this game so much that you're like, you know what? I know I can beat them. Let me just, you know, ain't nobody looking. Your mom's not near you. Let's just, let's just you know, spend a little $5. Even though the $5 is for the pizza, right? If the $5 is for the food. Nah, I just, I, you know, let me just, you know. And so you'll, you'll go to the clerk, you know, the, 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 the clerk or whatever, or the, the store guy, whatever. And then you'll ask for all ones, and then you put those ones in the machine, you get all quarters, and then they just finesse you out of $5 worth of quarters. <laughs> Never. I promise y'all, bro. Listen, you can play any other game there, the little racing games. You can play any other games there, like the little basketball. Even those things are rigged. The, the little basketball hoop things, bro, uh, I learned that like the, the, like, the, the rims are, are just curved. I'm like, bro, what? It, bro, I'm shooting, like, I'm shooting like Curry out there. Like, I'm just, you know, form perfect. And, you know, I'm missing these wide open shots. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm shooting like Curry. But I mean, who else would I be shooting like? Rudy Gay? I mean, but like, listen, at the end of the day, like, bro, everything in the arcade, it's just a big rig fest. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm never going there. <laughs> I, I'm never going to the arcade again, bro. Never. Unless I'm playing, like, a little racing game. Like, whatever, like, you're, you're driving. Like, you know, unless I'm doing that, bro. I'm not, I'm never, 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 bro. I'm throwing my money down the drain, bro. And these are fresh, pretty quarters. I could just, I could use that for, 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 for parking money. I could, bro, I could use these quarters for anything, bro. For, for, bro, I could throw these quarters into water for a wishing well. But no, no, no. I'm throwing these quarters <laughs> down the line for some tickets. <laughs> Bro, listen, unless you got, like, a big jar of quarters, do not go into the arcade, bro. I'm warning you guys now. Other than that, comment down below. What do you guys think about the video? I'll see you guys later for the next one. I'm out. And...